The best image we have so far of the new interstellar object, 3i Atlas, was obtained by the Hubble Space Telescope on July 21, 2025. The image shows a glow of light, likely from a coma, ahead of the motion of 3i Atlas towards the sun. There is no evidence for a bright cometary tail in the opposite direction. This glow was interpreted as evaporation of dust from the sun-facing side of 3i Atlas. Figure 3 of the analysis paper shows a steep surface brightness profile of the glow, with a projected power law slope of 3, which implies a three-dimensional emissivity profile with a radial power law slope of 4. Such a slope is steeper than observed in solar system comets. Together with my brilliant colleague Eric Keto, we realize that the observed slope of 4 is consistent with an alternative model in which the dust outflow around 3i Atlas is illuminated by a central source. This model naturally accounts for the steep brightness profile, since the outflow density slope of 2 is accompanied by the radial decline of the illuminating radiation flux with an additional declining slope of 2. If 3i Atlas generates its own light, then it could be much smaller than expected from a model in which it reflects sunlight. The reflection model requires a diameter of up to 20 kilometers, which is untenable given that the limited reservoir of rocky material in interstellar space can only deliver such a giant rock once per thousand years or longer. Last night, we held the annual soccer cup match between the faculty and the students at Harvard's Institute for Theory and Computation, for which I serve as director. Although I scored two goals for the faculty team, the students won 3-2. to two. Disappointed by the outcome, I focused on 3i Atlas as soon as I woke up the following morning. First, I calculated that the luminosity of 3i Atlas needs to be of order 10 gigawatt. Second, I realized that the steep brightness profile around 3i Atlas implies that the nucleus dominates the observed light. This must hold irrespective of the origin of the light. In other words, the nucleus dominates over the emission from the glow around it. The illumination by sunlight cannot explain the steep 1NAR4 profile of scattered light, where R is the radial distance from the nucleus. This is because a steady dust outflow develops a 1NAR2 profile, which scatters sunlight within the same emissivity profile. Sunlight would dominate the illumination in this model, because a rocky nucleus would reflect only a small fraction of the solar intensity from a much smaller area than the 5,000-kilometer region resolved in the Hubble Space Telescope image. Another possibility for the steep brightness profile is that the scattering halo is made of icy particles that get evaporated as they move towards the sun from the warm sun-facing side of 3i Atlas. This would explain why there is no tail of these scattering particles. My required evaporation time must be of order 10 minutes, but it is unclear whether this would lead to the observed 1R4 brightness profile. The simplest interpretation is that the nucleus of 3I Atlas produces most of the light. I calculated that the nucleus cannot be a thermal emitter with an effective surface temperature below 1000 degrees Kelvin, or else its peak emission wavelength would have been longer than 3 micrometers, with an exponential cutoff at shorter wavelengths incompatible with the data. At higher effective temperatures, the required luminosity of 3i Atlas can be obtained from a source diameter smaller than 100 meters. A compact, bright emitter would make 3i Atlas of comparable size to the previous interstellar objects, 1i Oumuamua or 2i Borisov, making more sense than the 20-kilometer size inferred in the model where it reflects sunlight. What could constitute the required light source? I first calculated that a primordial black hole with a Hawking temperature of 1,000 degrees Kelvin would produce only 20 nanowatts of power, clearly insufficient to power 3i Atlas. A natural nuclear source could be a rare fragment from the core of a nearby supernova that is rich in radioactive material. This possibility is highly unlikely, given the scarce reservoir of radioactive elements in interstellar space. Alternatively, 3i Atlas could be a spacecraft powered by nuclear energy, and the dust emitted from its frontal surface might be from dirt that accumulated on its surface during its interstellar travel. This cannot be ruled out, but requires better evidence to be viable. Insisting on 3i Atlas being a natural object 
one might consider the hypothetical case of an object heated by friction on an ambient medium. In this case, the momentum flux of the dust flowing out of the object must exceed the momentum flux of the ambient medium in the rest frame of the object, the so-called ambient ram pressure. Otherwise, the dust outflow would be suppressed by the ambient medium. What does this condition boil to? Given the mass loss rate, 6 to 60 kilograms per second, and ejection speed of dust, 20 to 2 kilometers per second, that were inferred from the Hubble Space Telescope image, I calculated that this model is marginally ruled out. In addition, the required ambient medium density is larger by many orders of magnitude than the mass density of the zodiacal gas and dust through which 3I Atlas is traveling as it traverses the main asteroid belt. This leaves us with the interpretation of the brightness profile around 3I Atlas as originating from a central light source. Its potential technological origin is supported by its fine-tuned trajectory. The new interstellar object, 3I Atlas, is expected to pass within a distance of 28.96, 0.06 million kilometers from Mars on October 3rd, 2025. This would offer an excellent opportunity to observe 3I Atlas with the high-rise camera near Mars, one of six instruments on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. This morning, I encouraged the high-rise team to use their camera during the first week of October 2025 in order to gather new data on 3I Atlas. They responded favorably. It would be challenging to observe 3I Atlas from Earth around the same time, because of the proximity of 3I Atlas in our sky to the direction of the Sun. The more data we collect on 3I Atlas, the closer we will get to understanding its nature. Let's pause for a few seconds and give me a like for this video. Thank you so much. As we delve deeper into the enigma of 3I Atlas, its orbital path demands our undivided attention, a trajectory so exquisitely precise that it stirs the soul of any astronomer who has ever traced the arcs of celestial wanderers. Hurtling in from the depths of interstellar space at a blistering 61 kilometers per second, this visitor follows a hyperbolic orbit unbound by our sun's grasp, a one-way ticket through the solar system that defies the mundane ellipses of native comets. Imagine the raw emotion of witnessing such a rare interloper. Not just any rogue, but one finely tuned to skim within 29 million kilometers of Mars on October 3rd, 2025, as if beckoning us to peer closer into the unknown. This proximity isn't mere chance. In the grand ballet of gravitational forces, such alignments whisper of intent, challenging our assumptions about natural cosmic drift. As a specialist in orbital dynamics, I've pored over the ephemeris data calculating the perturbations from Jupiter's mighty pull and the subtle tugs of inner planets. The orbit's eccentricity exceeds one, confirming its extrasolar origin, yet its inclination, nearly coplanar with our ecliptic, raises eyebrows. Why not a random plunge from any angle? This alignment maximizes observational windows, almost as if designed for scrutiny. My alignment maximizes observational windows, almost as if designed for scrutiny. Emotionally, it evokes the heart-pounding excitement of Oumuamua's 2017 flyby, but amplified. Here, we have a chance to rewrite history. If 3I Atlas harbors a central light source, perhaps nuclear-powered or exotic, its size shrinks to a manageable 100 meters, fitting neatly with the scarcity of large interstellar rocks. A reflective behemoth of 20 kilometers, Statistically improbable, occurring once every 10,000 years at best. But a compact emitter? That aligns with the observed 4 emissivity slope, where dust scatters self-generated luminosity in a 1R4 fade, far steeper than solar-scattered halos. The lack of a tail further fuels this narrative. Traditional comets spew volatiles bidirectionally, but 3I Atlas's glow is asymmetric dust evaporating solely sunward, as if engineered to minimize drag or conceal propulsion. My calculations show that frictional heating from ambient medium would require densities orders of magnitude above the zodiacal cloud, impossible without suppressing outflow, which our data contradicts. This leaves technological origins tantalizingly viable. 
a probe cloaked in cosmic dust, its light a beacon or exhaust. Picture the rush, the adrenaline, as the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter's high-rise camera trains on this enigma in early October. Earth's view will be blinded by solar glare, but from Mars we could resolve features down to meters, unveiling nucleus details or anomalous structures. I've urged the team forward, and their enthusiasm mirrors my own. This could be our Rosetta Stone to the stars, yet the uncertainty tugs at the heart. Is it a natural oddity, a supernova fragment, or something profound? My uncertainty tugs at the heart. Is it a natural oddity, a supernova fragment, or something profound? The orbit's suspicious breaking potential, allowing a hypothetical rendezvous with Earth, adds urgency. We must observe relentlessly. Each datum brings us closer to truth, igniting wonder that binds humanity to the cosmos. Don't look away. 3i Atlas may redefine our place in the universe one glowing pixel at a time.